Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the EICT PCR Virtual Symposium 2021. It's the 9th of October 2021 and the 2.50 to 3.35 session. I'm Dr. Azari Rosman, Senior Consultant Cardiologist from the National Heart Institute here in Kuala Lumpur. It is an honor for me to chair the session on Channel 2, and this is about small but strong semi-compliant balloon mm -hmm. in complex and complicated case PCI. Today's discussion will be by three accomplished international cardiologists. Dr. Wasan from King Chula Longka Memorial Hospital, Thailand, Dr. Scott Harding from Wellington Hospital in New Zealand, and Dr. Yoon from Kim Yong University Dong San Hospital, Korea. The learning objectives in this session for the next 45 minutes will be to explore, number one, the strategies to simplify complex PCI cases, to touch on the advancement of the new semi-compliant balloon designs which have a better chance of improving success for difficult cases such as CTOs, and to illustrate the use of this balloon in real life in complex PCI lesions as illustrated by the case discussions by our presenters, and how indeed this can make the job easier. So here are a few housekeeping announcements. We encourage interaction from all participants. Please feel free to comment wherever you want to, and you're welcome to post questions in the chat box. Now, our first presenter is Dr. Scott Harding, who will be showcasing a case entitled Managing Lesions in Patients with Multivessel Disease. This is the first of two parts. Dr. Scott, the screen is yours. Thank you very much. So it's a great pleasure to be part of this symposium for AICT, Asia PCR. So I've been asked to present a case uh, looking at multivessel disease and, uh, and uh, some of the um, difficulties and managements around that. So these are my disclosures. This is a 57-year-old man who presented in the community with an anterior STEMI. He was thrombolized in the community three hours after symptom onset and then transferred directly from the community to Wellington Hospital by a helicopter. He arrived at uh, 7 o'clock at night and on arrival, as ECG showed resolution of his ST elevation, he had some low-level ongoing chest pain and was taken to the cath lab. Um, his past medical history it was of hypertension, dyslipidemia, high BMI and obstructive sleep apnea. So we took him to the cath lab and uh, what you can see is this is the spider view, uh, the left main looks normal, um, the circumflex has mild disease, but when we took uh, the uh, cranial view, uh, you can see he's got a nasty, uh, long Medina 111 LAD bifurcation lesion uh, with only Timmy 2 flow down the LAD. And then also a large diagonal, which has another further hazy lesion in the sort of proximal to mid portion. Uh, you can also see that the distal right coronary artery is filling via uh, collaterals, mainly from an AC uh, channel running in the AV groove. This is the right coronary artery. So you can see a proximal um, RCA occlusion with an ambiguous uh, proximal cap. It's more than 20 millimeters in length. The course is a bit ambiguous. Um, there's some bending uh, and so it's JCTO3. Uh, he had a normal hemoglobin and renal function. Uh, we did a quick uh, bedside echo um, in the cath lab. He had an ejection fraction of 60% with some apical hypokinesis. Um, obviously, we didn't work at a syntax score at the time, but subsequently, syntax score is 23. Uh, syntax 2 score uh, for CAVG is 18 and PCI 22. So um, the question then is, um, how should we treat this man? Um, who has presented with an anterior STEMI, has complex disease, um, how, how, how would we proceed? Thank you, Scott, for that wonderful presentation. It's clearly a multivessel disease. So let's see what the strategy is uh, for our various discussions. So perhaps I can invite Dr. Yun to give his view on what's, uh, what's your go-to strategy for such multivessel disease? Hmm. Yes, uh, uh, this is, uh, in this case, uh, definitely, LAD region is culprit, and uh, there are uh, very difficult non culprit uh, RCA CTO region. So, uh, of course, uh, 
RCA should be treated. However, when we can treat it safely or not, it is a problem. So uh, I'd like to ask, ask to Dr. Harding, uh, when is the proper timing for, for the uh, non RCACT origin PCI for you? Well, it's a good question. Um, I think it really depends on how big the anterior infarct is and, and what its recovery from that is. Um, we know that the CTO lesion is stable. I think the main concern here is the very complex disease in the LAD. And for example, whether it's reasonable to leave that alone and think about surgery or the fact that, you know, it's only got Timmy2 flow, it's uh, collateralizing his uh, right coronary artery, there's a large uh, territory at risk, and whether to proceed with PCI and, and how best to do that PCI. Okay, thank you very much. Dr. Wasan, maybe a short comment from you. <clears throat> what would you do in this patient? Yes, thank you. Uh, very, very nice and very complex disease, uh, Scott. I think uh, this one definitely the anterior wall MI and has a culprit lesion in the big LED and the big diagonal bifurcation. And this is 111 uh, uh classification. I think uh, we must take care of this LED and diagonal. But first of all, I think uh, if patient stable and the flow is good, maybe we can have uh, some kind of the imaging like the IVAS or the OCT to see uh, about the complex lesions. If you have this complex lesion and you see a lot of uh, uh, fatty deposit or the fat inside that prone to have uh, no flow, I think that's the problem because if you touch this one as uh, in the early stage, you will have a no flow. And if you have no flow in this one, everything's gone. So for me, I think uh, if the imaging shows that it's rather uh, not very complex and not uh, prone to have the distal embolize or the no flow, I will go with the two stent strategy in the LED and the diagonal. And perhaps I think uh, the mini crash or maybe uh, the Q lot may be suitable for this kind of the lesions, uh, not to lose uh, either branch, uh, big, especially the big branch in the diagonal. I think uh, that's the key. And if uh, you see that this one is un rather unstable and prone to have uh, problems after the dilatation, uh, that can cause a problem. I may go, uh, if the patient stable, I may go to perform the CTO in the RCA first for the backup and then come back for the LED and that uh, later. All right. All right, indeed. So the go-to is PCI then. Scott, maybe we move on to the, your, your what you actually did for this patient. Sure. Okay, so remember this is what the LAD looked like. Um, and obviously one of the big challenges here is going to be wiring um, this lesion and, and, and not disrupting it while we're wiring both branches. Uh, we did um, start uh, with a Trumo run through extra floppy, but really couldn't uh, uh, advance the, um, the wire through, through the lesion. We then uh, basically took a microcatheter uh, and a fielder XTR with a CTO-like bend on it. Um, and with this, we managed to wire uh, both the LAD and the, um, uh, and the diagonal with some difficulty, but um, we managed to, to uh, wire them. Uh, and then obviously using the microcatheter, we swapped out for workhorse wires um, because you don't want to leave the fielder XTR in there. We then proceeded to uh, pre-dilation um, uh, because we had no flow just with the wires down um, with a 2-5 balloon in the LAD in the, in the beginning of a diagonal. Um, the problem was once we're done pre-dilation, um, this is what we saw. We had slow flow down the LAD and diagonal, but also you can see that sort of staining suggesting we may have a dissection. Um, we did IVIS, and what IVIS showed is, despite only using a 2-5 balloon, that there was a dissection there involving the origin of that diagonal branch. And so um, we proceeded to stenting at that point. 
normally my go-to in this sort of situation is a DK crush, but really for time and efficiency, in this case, we did a mini crush. So basically um, put a stent uh, in the diagonal. So we'll put a 2528 into the diagonal and we'll crush with a 35 balloon based on either sizing. Um, and then uh, we put a 3528 uh, stent overlapping with a 4512, um, proximally and potted with a 50. Now, one of the problems with a, 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 a mini crush, as you know, is recrossing because you've um, yeah. got to cross through three layers. And again, that, that did prove difficult. Um, and But we managed to recross um, with uh, a 125 uh, millimeter Rure. And, you know, this is really where you need a good balloon with a good crossability. We then serially dilated um, and then uh, did a final kiss with a 3.5 and a 3.0 AccuForce and a final pot with a 5.0. And that's the um, final result with good MSAs in all vessels. In fact, um, we did delay the, the right coronary artery because um, he is stable. Um, uh, he had a modest enzyme rise um, and a, a repeat echo showed a similar appearance of the echo. So we thought it was best to delay things, brought him back for, at, a, at a later date for the um, uh, CTO. And really because this is JCTO3 um, we, and some ambiguity in the proximal cap, um, we took a primary retrograde approach um, and when we're doing retrograde, we're unable to puncture with an ultimate three. We escalated the Gaia second next, but if you look, the Gaia second next appears to be going off course. So um, what we did is we knuckled uh, XTA retrograde uh, to overcome that ambiguity. So you can see here. And then uh, perform conventional reverse cart and play stents. So uh, one of the things, uh, this is the final result, so a nice final result. But I think uh, one of the challenges in all these uh, cases, first of all, um, we need good deliverable balloons, but also we need uh, balloons that can rewrap and be reused because we use a lot of balloons, and if we can't rewrap and reuse, um, you know, the case becomes uh, very expensive. So that's my presentation. Any comments? Right. Thank you, thank you, Scott. So with, with each um, reuse the balloon, the profile is, remains good, is that, Scott? I mean, uh, despite the fact that you've managed to use it quite a number of times. Yeah, so um, it's one of the things we like about the Ruray and, and also the Aquaforce is that they rewrap relatively well. Obviously, an NC balloon never rewraps as well as a semi-compliant balloon. Mm. But mm. Uh, out of all the balloons, they, they have good rewrap and good reusability. Good point, yeah. So, uh, Dr. Wasan, maybe uh, perhaps your comment, would you uh, do this uh, in a different way or do you have any other additional comments that you'd like to do about the procedures done? It's rather elegant with the results, fantastic results. Yeah, I think that's a very good results and very good techniques, uh, Scott. And uh, I think I, I may do the same, uh, except for the, the things that I, if I see any... Uh, features of the high probability of the no flow in the LED. I, I, I will do the CTO in the RCA first for the backup, as I say. Uh, the rest, I think I, I will agree with uh, Scott that you did very great, great job. Thank you. It's, right, it's a priority of uh, which lesions then. Dr. Yun, any comments on your side? I mean, what, what features of a balloon do you, do you take into consideration when, when you're doing this kind of very tight, almost near total uh, occlusions in lesions. Uh, you see that LED is a real tough one. Uh, what, what, what is yeah. your tips and tricks on, the, on this? On this? Oh, yeah. Uh, it, it was a great case. Uh, con congratulate uh, Dr. Harding. And uh, when, when Dr. Harding uh, advanced to the diagonal branch after stenting, he, he did a touch to proximal area, and then he tried the small-sized balloon. It is very clever strategy to uh, and to enter the proper site. So uh, I I prefer the uh, the diagonal branch uh, after then uh, path technique uh, prior 
to the uh, dia uh, branch side branch access, uh, it is very important uh, important uh, strategy. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Yoon. I, we come now to the next part of the presentation, which is to invite Dr. Yoon to present his brief on the technical details and the new Ruray balloon, Terumo Ruray semi-compliant balloon, uh, in regards to this new technology that's involved in the design and, and his personal yeah. experience yeah, on the Terumo Ruray. Dr. Dr. Yoon, mm -hmm. your, your session, please. Thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, my, my slide. Oh, yeah, this is my slide. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. And I'm Hyuk Jun Yoon from uh, South Korea. Uh, today, I'd like to talk about uh, semi-compliant balloon design and experience with the Ray in complex cases. Uh, at first, we are facing the challenge of a more complex case as usual practice. And in this situation, Ray is newest generation semi-compliant balloon of Terumo. Uh, the most important feature of Ray balloon are uh, as follows. The mm -hmm. first is a spender profile of balloon, and second is flexible distal part, and the uh, third is robust and pushable shaft. The first feature is the cylinder profile. Although the entry profile is the same as the Tajuna balloon, however, the bonding part has decreased by 8% and the crossing profile has decreased by 12%. And shorter and thinner radio opaque marker also contributed to lower crossing profile. The second major advance of Ray balloon is flexibility. Usually the bonding part has lost its elasticity. Ray solved this problem by reducing bonding part. The third improvement of Ray is robust and pushable shaft. The shaft of Ray is less flexible and it can transmit the pushing force more readily compared with the flexible shaft. Mm. The core wire structure at mid shaft allows the force to be transmitted to the stiffener distal shaft without push loss. And it also changed the method of connecting distal and middle shaft to transmit the force of the proximal to distal. And if you look at the specification table, the biggest difference is the balloon profile. And bench tests show that even if the similar entry profile, Ray balloon shows better performance to pass the tight reason model. It also uh, shows better performance in passing tortoise region due to the same uh, physical property. The movie clip is so somewhat long. And from now, I'd like to share two representative cases that show effectiveness of a Ray balloon. The first case is a 65-year-old gentleman. As you can see, there are similarly tortoise LAD reasons. We use a guiding catheter with good backup support and two wire. However, it didn't allow past small balloon, and I was also. However, Ray balloon easily passed through the, the curvature. We can treat uh, this case very easily. And also, stent cannot uh, pass through the region, so we use extension catheter under the support of Ray balloon, and we can treat this uh, total region well. The next case is a 68-year-old CTO patient with poor guiding support. As you can see, there are uh, RCA long CTO. So we 
but first we we'll consider bilateral approach. However, septal fracturing is not possible, so we choose real time, live guided puncture. Fortunately, UV3 and Gaia3 wire can pass through the CTO region. At that time, we are afraid of poor backup support. So we are consider balloon anchoring at the at the branch. Mm -hmm. However, the balloon pass easily. We could finish the case without further difficulty in this case. To emphasize again, the feature of relay are expected to be very useful in treating complex reasons. The first thing is slender profile. The second feature is flexible part, and the third feature is robust and pushable shift. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you for your, very your nice. attention. Thank yeah. you. So that's a very nice illustration of the, the uh, maneuverability and trackability of the balloon on a very tortuous, it's the LED, I thought that was very tortuous and very tight. Um, so we move on to the second part of the session, which is to look at the retrograde case. Uh, this is the retrograde case by uh, Dr. Wasan. And Dr. Wasan, uh, you want to share with us um, the presentation on this case. This is split into two parts, which is interspersed by some discussion. Over to you, Dr. Wasan. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, my case presentation. Uh, first, I have uh, no conflict of interest for this presentation. Uh, this uh, case of a uh, 64 years old male and failed previous two PCI before. The PCI procedures are uh, performed because of uh, angina on exertion and the lesions uh, is only the RCA total occlusions. The first attempt uh, failed the anti grade approach mm -hmm. and end up uh, with a cardiac tamponade. And also the first attempt we we, uh, we perform about maybe two or three months before and then go to the second attempt. And the second attempt also we try to do the retrograde, but at that time we don't have uh, enough equipment, like we don't have the SUO03 and then we fail again. And I will show you why we fail at the second time. Uh, this is uh, the angiogram that looks not very really complex, but you can see that uh, it's doubtful that at the stump and the distal uh, and the entry point, I think we don't know exactly where is the part. Is it up and down or the straight or some kind of that? So the first attempt with the antiquate approach, I think we fail. And we try the second attempt with the retrograde approach and we use the, this route um, the first time we, we tried with the Xiong and the Xiong also failed at, at the first attempt. The second attempt we used a Suo03 and the problem is you will see the distal part of the RCA appear at the end. Uh, this route we success to pass with the Suo03 but no micro catheters, not, no any micro catheters can pass to the distal part of the septal branch uh, pretty greatly. So we pass just only the guide wire with the SUO03 and the SUO03 just in uh, at the part, this whole part of the PDA that is totally occluded. <laughs> you can see also is a totally occluded at that part. So when we pass the wire down and this wire, the SUO03 cannot pass through this uh, CTO of the distal RCA. So this patient has a uh, together proximal RCA CTO and also the distal PDA CTO. So that's my case. Right. Uh, maybe I can get uh, Dr. Scott to uh, to give his views on this double CTO and uh, in approach. Anything you would do differently? Uh, thank you. So I think it's always difficult um, when we have a short time, um, we don't have time to review the previous cases, but 
an important principle of CTO PCI is when there's been previous failures is to review the previous angiograms carefully to understand the mechanism of failure so that we can try and avoid that in the future and uh, devise different strategies. Um, but presuming that um, retrograde wiring, you know, obviously led to a perforation um, and there's some ambiguity, um, the strategies would be either to use an IBIS to try and get into one of the side branches to try and guide that integrate puncture or to go retrograde. Now, you had, did attempt to go retrograde and um, passed um, the Sion, uh, uh, sewer three across, but no microcatheter would pass. And then, of course, you had a distal CTO. So somehow you have to get the microcatheter into the PDA so that you can cross that distal CTO. So um, obviously one thing is to change the microcatheter, but sometimes a low profile balloon. Um, so um, using a 1.5 Ruray um, to dilate the channel and then allow the passage of the microcatheter may be a strategy. So I'll, I'll be interested to know how you eventually overcame this. All right, we'll see that in a minute. Dr. Yoon, your comments first. Retrograde, integrate, which would you use with the microcatheter being stuck there in the septal? Yeah, uh, I will try uh, various septal. Some uh, septal channel can be passed through the uh, PL branch, not, not PDA. So uh, we can check the uh, each uh, septal channel by uh, contrast injection, and then we can negotiate the uh, better, better channel. And also, uh, I don't know uh, if I haven't heard, uh, have you done a coronary CT? And sometimes CT image can give, give us uh, impor important information about the, uh, another route. Yes, right. I okay. think that's a very good point. Yeah. Yeah. CTA is uh, maybe very helpful, but uh, in this case, uh, we did not do the CTA. Right. So, okay, we look forward to seeing what you did, uh, uh, Wasan, for this patient. Clearly, you have a bit more experience. Okay, so uh, after this, I appointment for the third attempt uh, for these patients together again, uh, the anti-grade and retrograde. And you can see that this time, <laughs> I don't know whether you can see that, uh, at this time, uh, we pass the lesions, uh, we pass the retrograde guideline through the septal channels, but the septal channels that we go through is a, a bit proximal to the, the last one. So the guideline is entered into the proximal part of the second CTO. So we can successfully pass with the guideline, retrograde guideline to the uh, distal right coronary and go to the lesions. And at the lesions, uh, that's very difficult one because uh, also the retrograde guideline try to go and I think at the first time it's not go into the true lumen because it's go upward, very upward. And then uh, I, I try again anti-grade and retrograde together. And also we try the cut uh, and reverse cut techniques. Um, parallel Y, everything we, we try also fail. But suddenly I see that the retrograde Y after going upward and then it's come back and then go into the proximal true lumen. So I think uh, it's like a kind of the shepherd cook uh, appearance of the right coronary uh, that we think at the first time is also go straight in the right coronary. So we fail integrate at that time. So after that, the retrograde Y can pass and then we use the snare to, to get the tip of the guide wire into the guiding catheters. And then use the wrong the rules uh, to go from the anti grade guide wire into the retrograde micro catheters that we trap the wire and go with the retrograde micro catheters and long the rules. And then finally, uh, mm -hmm. after successfully passed with the guide wire and small balloon very small balloon, you, you know, the U-ray, uh, pass easily. And then we check with the IWAS 
And this is the IWAS, it's uh, like uh, all calcified ring all the way at the proximal part. So that's, that's very important that uh, keep our ride, the retrograde ride into the true domain and then go to the proximal stump. Okay. After that, yes, then we put in the DES and then the, the final results. And this is a very good final result. Uh, I think uh, to success in this case that uh, we must use uh, good equipment and the appropriate equipment in each time and each step. And we, we finally uh, check with also the parent's vessel which has some injury and fix uh, with the stain in the LED as well. And this is all the equipment we use. <laughs> quite a numbers, but finally success. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that this, this is, okay, uh, maybe this is a take home okay. message. Yes. Uh, if you fail uh, CTO PCI, uh, I think as, a, as Scott mentioned that we must review and then uh, prepare for the next procedures. And then I think uh, if it fell again, CTA, I was guide, yeah. And if possible, you, you may try. If you think that uh, the first or the second one failed and you know the reason why, and then you can try the third one. Let's hope that success for the last time. Thank you very much. Wonderful, good advice, very persevering. <laughs> so um, thank you very much. That was a very nice result at the end, uh, Wasan. So perhaps I can ask uh, Scott, what what would you do that would uh, use less uh, in terms of resources and make it simpler, in fact, for you know for such a case? <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, I I think this is not an uncommon situation. You know, uh, ambiguity at the proximal bend of the right coronary, and I think we often underestimate the course. Um, we think that it takes a straighter course, and it can be a real shepherd's crook. Um, and so I think the lessons from this are, uh, you know, obviously did very well getting retrograde the second time. But one of the problems can be is that people es escalate the wire too quickly. Um, and if we take a relatively soft wire, you know, something like a Pilot 200 or a, uh, maybe a UB3 or something like that, then it's more likely to follow the course of the wire. And I think you, your original wire was following the course of the vessel. You just weren't sure it was the course of the vessel. And again, uh, if there is continued uncertainty, uh, I think that's where there is a, a role for a knuckle wire. Um, uh, again, you know, obviously that doesn't mean you go true to true like you have, which was very nice. But the real risk in this sort of situation is escalation to stiff wires as you end up with another perforation, but this time, you know, from retrograde. So I, I guess my advice is, you know, when there's ambiguity, um, start with intermediate wires with tips um, and, uh, and see if it can find your way. If there's continuous uncertainty and you can't resolve that from the antegrade, um, then that's time to try and advance the knuckle wire to overcome that ambiguity. Thank you, thank you, Scott. Uh, Dr. Yoon, um, any comments on that? Uh, there, there was a fair comment from Dr. Scott Harding. What are your views on that? Yeah. I mean, is there anything that you would add? Yeah, mm, yeah. Uh, I agree with uh, Dr. Harding's uh, statement, and uh, it is it was uh, I see proximal reason with a uh, uh, poor guiding support. So uh, there is a very uh, Big risk of the dissection to aorta. So in in that case, the uh, use of the use of the uh, snare it can be good option to reduce the further. Uh, uh, in that case, we cannot uh, do uh, reverse cut because there is very short segment of the pr proximal RCA region. So uh, I, I agree with. The, the strategy of the Dr. Hassan, I, I, yeah. I do, uh, yeah, similar cases, uh, somewhat, and, and because of uh, retrograde wiring, give us very good 
backup support. However, in that case, we also need very uh, efficient balloon or stent can be needed to reduce yeah. the uh, further for the difficulty. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And, and on that note, you mentioned balloon. What, what, what are the features of a balloon that you look for to use in this kind of lesions? I mean, is there a particular uh, thing, you know? I mean, these are, these are tricky lesions anyway. Is there, is there one that you've used recently in your experience? I know there are many balloons that you've probably preferentially used, but um, now that you've had exposure to the newer balloons, is there any, any particular advantage that you feel takes precedence yeah. over the rest? Yeah, current uh, Ray balloon uh, give us uh, uh, provide a very small uh, entry profile, and also uh, it can it can uh, give us a very good crossability and pushability. So the, the efficacy of the Ray can be maximized for uh, this kind of cases. Right. Okay, thank you very much. Scott, maybe some uh, final words before we close, um, before I give my closing remarks, but uh, your final words with regards to new technology, semi-compliant, balloon profile, and so on, for the future. I mean, uh, do you think all balloons should be made this way? Do you think there's a particular advantage that is above everything else? Yes, um, thank you for that. I think when we're doing complex PCI, we need all the help we can get. You know, um, the better the equipment, um, the easier the job. And... Clearly, not all uh, semi-compliant balloons are uh, equal, and we know this from our, you know, own experience. And we really need balloons um, for these sort of complex cases, where they have a combination of features. It's about the tip construction, it's about the entry profile, it's about the crossing profile, it's about the hydrophilic coating on the outside, and it's about the shaft composition to give pushability. Uh, you know, if you only got one of those, you, you don't get the crossability. And really, we're evolving to balloons that have all of these features, such as the Rure, that really give us, you know, an advantage in crossing very difficult lesions. So I think, you know, the future is balloons that combine all of that technology um, really to give us the optimal crossing um, ability. Thank you. Thank you. Well said. Uh, now that we've come uh, to the end of the session, I think all of you, I hope, have enjoyed being with us and, of course, attended the session. Uh, and I'd like to uh, thank uh, Turumo and the sponsors uh, for making this possible uh, and this session uh, such a success. So allow me to make some closing remarks. First, I'd like to thank uh, all three presenters, Wasan, Scott and Zune. Thank you for your wonderful presentations, illustrations and personal experience with this new uh, new innovative balloon technology. Uh, they have been excellent cases. Uh, and I think uh, the, the take-home message is that there are three important design features of this balloon has been, has been said many times before. Uh, and the technology is that such that it allows a more flexible tip, which allows you to track those difficult narrow lesions. Uh, it's got a superior classic profile, no doubt about that. And an excellent, excellent pushability is so important in some of these very tight uh, near total, if not total lesions. So uh, with that, I think, uh, you know, try don't take our word for it. You should try it yourselves. And our presenters have uh, vouched for that, the fact that this performance is superior to many that they've had in the past. Uh, and I've tried it myself, and it is, in fact, uh, very, very, very good. Uh, and so with that, I'd like to once again uh, thank all of you, uh, every one of you, uh, for a wonderful session and being with us, and all the attendees for this uh, great teaching session. Thank you all, and have a good day. <music>